gets better. Say that it gets better. Oh, P.S. I'm oh, P.S. I'm gay. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is Gayish, the podcast that's as enduring as the Berlin Wall. I, I, I don't think there's anything about that sentence that's true. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to last about as long, I think, until angry mobs tear us down. If we're still doing this like 40 years from now, God no. help us. Mike, you don't... We're going to have a talk about this later and where you think this is going. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. We're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality. And today we're going to talk about passing. Yeah, meaning like... Throwing a football. Passing, yes. We're going to give you... Turn on very, your blinker. Very verbal definitions of oh, passing, passing <laughs> on a highway. What are other passing? Like passing over? Passing away. <laughs> passing over. I meant like Passover, but with an ing in there, but I accidentally said a real thing. So that's good too. Yeah. Um, passing as a podcast, <laughs> yeah. which this does sometimes. But no, first. Wait. Oh, but no, the real def, the real oh. thing, like passing as straight. Yeah. Is, uh, that's what it really means. Yeah. Uh, but use your turn signal. Come on, everybody. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. But first. But first. News stuff. News. Yeah. We're going to actually get to hear the news. And there's been, has there been a buildup of news that we need to cover? I mean, not really. Oh. News moves so fast these days. God only knows. <laughs> like sometimes even between the time that we record this and it goes to the air. Like, yeah. We've already fucking forgotten about it. Yeah. 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 Um, so. I thought this was really interesting because it happened at Berlin Pride, and I was at Berlin Pride. Um, the country of Israel actually opened up a booth at Berlin Pride, at the like festival, where they were giving away like rainbow flags that had um, the Star of David on it, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, like stickers, and, and just trying to say that Israel is with you, gay people. Um, but then um, LGBT organizations in Israel pointed out that they are actively working against gay rights in Israel, that just this year they uh, passed a bill that said that same-sex couples could not adopt in Israel. Hmm. Um, so th they started using the word pinkwashing. I haven't heard that. Yeah. Um, it's the practice of a state or company to promote themselves as LGBT plus friendly and downplay their negative behavior. Oh, so they're like trying to be like, hey, come to Israel. Everything's great. And then it's like, well, but not really. Yep. Yeah. But you also need like people that are out like, you know, do saying like there are people that are LGBT friendly in this place. Like you don't want it to like you don't want the, the only thing you hear in the news is, you know, the, the negative stuff. Like there are gay people there. And yeah, no, that, that's true. The difference is that this is the country of Israel that bought the booth. It's oh. it, it's not like this is a gay organization oh. or a, a gay friendly people that are that are like being seen yeah. that, that are there for representation. Rather, it's it's the the country of Israel, the Israel Foreign Ministry. Got it. Okay, so like Israel, the country, like got some legs and walked over and was like, "Yo, come on inside me," and then yep. and then it's like, "But but don't adopt a baby or that's try right. to have rights." That's right. That's right. I get it. Um, oh, and so wait, you were in Berlin Pride. We're also going to talk about you being in Russia. Yeah. After news story time. Yeah, we're going to see if I'm real or if I'm a Russian agent that's been cleverly. Um, swapped yes your brain has been swapped with a russian a, like pretty good russian spy yeah not the best maybe a lady spy you have the brain of a lady spy Ooh. it is okay i was wondering if that means she's straight because i still want dick hmm but this is we'll we'll have to figure this out when we get to like the brain swap territory yeah brain swap scientist not as easy as you'd think yeah. A lot of moral conundrums. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, moving on. There has... <laughs> you didn't want to keep expanding on... Not the... really. Okay, that's fine. Not really. <laughs> um, I sense sometimes you, like, I'll say weird things and you're just like, I don't want to deal with that thing. <laughs> like, I don't want to have to process that or, like, make sense of this or, like... Yeah. Yeah. I'm the kid that, like, everyone's playing with Play-Doh and I show up and I'm like here's a twig and they're like ah, 
we're gonna keep going on the play-doh though or, or like like the crazy person at the mall <laughs> that's just like talking to plants and yeah. everybody just walks right by them <laughs> like pretends that they're not there they have feelings mike i know hashtag plants live yeah. matter yeah uh so uh in the united states senate they uh the they is uh, democratic senators just uh introduced a bill called the census equality act which is saying that the 2030 census should ask questions about uh uh the I'm not doing well at the not being edited. I'm so <laughs> <It's> sorry. <okay. laughs> I'm out of it's practice. Okay. You're a Russian spy. I know. It's fine. I know. I know. Um, uh, it would require the Census Bureau to collect data about sexual orientation, gender identity information, and the uh, relationship status to include whether that partner, the partners are of same or opposite gender. Nice. Yeah. And 2030 in 2030. It's yeah. Right around the corner. We'll count then. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. Right. Is, are, is it going to be voted maybe, on? Yeah. As soon as it, yeah. If, if it passes, no, um, apparently the 2020 census here in a couple of years will include new relationship categories, differentiating between same sex and opposite sex couples. So it, they're already going to ask, uh, are you opposite sex husband, wife, spouse, are you opposite sex unmarried partners? Are you same sex husband, wife, or spouse, or same sex unmarried partner? So the, you will have those four choices on the 2020 census, but it isn't actually asking about gender identity or about uh, sexual orientation other than are you with a person that's the same gender or not? Yeah. And so the problem here is our bi people can be married to an opposite gender partner and they're still bi and right. still in our family. And uh, also trans people, you can be married to an opposite gender person or same gender person. Fuck, we hate, I mean, we hate really, trans people. Like, we're okay with gays and lesbians are like starting to get there, but like, we still don't like bi's and trans. Really, instead of being like, multiple choice the census should just be a fill in the blank <laughs> just write, write whatever you want to and we'll 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 figure it out take the coal miners <laughs> sit them down in front of the fill out your own gender identity and marital status and that's what they can do yeah can they read that was mean i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's just all that coal got to their brain they got coal brain <laughs> the, the well-known malady coal brain you know like it just gets all in your coal brain it's called it's called the santa defect um and you just can't get it out and you forget how to write i thought maybe coal brain was when you can't get the song sunny comes sunny came home out of your head that's paula coal brain uh, okay <laughs> i didn't know who does anyone actually know who sings that other than you no literally the only one i don't actually know if it's even her Okay. Anyway, uh, so then that we'll, was possibly hilarious. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Um, uh, last but not least, my favorite news item of the week: a Republican legislator in Illinois, in the Illinois State House, has been uh, is going to resign tomorrow. His ex girlfriend released information showing that he was using her naked photos. To talk to other dudes oh. online in a sexy way. He was catfishing other men with his ex-girlfriend's naked photos. Which it's always it's always the closet cases, right? Did you do you know if he did anything soups anti-gay? Um oh if if his like voting yeah. record or whatever? No, I haven't seen anything about his voting record. Hmm. Um yeah, but it, you're right. It's always like closeted. I don't know about this case, but generally like closeted Republicans that outwardly say they hate gays and support family values that are like yeah. fucking dudes from Grinder in the bathroom. And yeah, 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 yeah. And apparently they broke up because he cheated on her with girls. He like huh. it just it, he sounds very confused. It like the whole thing seems really confusing to me. What are you doing showing boobs to guys to turn them on online if you're not kind of gay oh for sure i did that <laughs> well I, I did that once when i was you catfished a dude ca yeah with lady part pictures i this is i think before people would be like get this so like back in the days of aol instant messenger mm. hey if you're under 18 go away you're not gonna get this um <laughs> back in the <laughs> 
I mean, right? Like, they're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, I don't know. How many high schoolers listen to us, do you think? Well, some people are like... you shouldn't. You should not listen <laughs> to listen, us. Listen to Mr. Stevenson. He's <laughs> smarter than us. Oh, and remember when we told you to listen to Making Gay History? If you're not doing that, you're dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting dumber by the second as this podcast continues. Um, no, so on the days of AOL and some Messenger, I created a fake account... Well, I guess it was real for me because it was anyway. And then found a picture of a girl on the Internet Mm -hmm. and then sent a message to a dude that I thought was hot Mm -hmm. in band um, and didn't like didn't really talk to too much. And then I told him to like that was like kind of hot for me because like he was like, you know, flirty with this girl. Yeah. And then I think I, I was like. Hey, like, let's meet up for a movie. Or no, he wanted to go to a movie. And I was like, okay, and like set a date and time. Oh, my God. Sorry, Patrick. Did you see his dick? No. I don't think there were dick pics then. I mean, that's a lie. (laughs) But like, not as common. Like, not as like, oh, everyone, throw your dicks everywhere. Yeah. It was back when people still like kind of worried about information (laughs) on the internet. And instead of shaming you about what happened and the horrible, horrible emotional manipulation you you did on this poor boy, I I just wanted to know about his dick. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Me too. No, no, no. That was horrible. And I shouldn't have done that. And. And I have since only done it a few more times. So yeah. great. <laughs> Some lessons you have to learn multiple times yeah. before it just goes in yeah. there. <laughs> like I'm bad at taking a dick. I tried a few times. I was bad at it. And then finally it went in there. Yep. Yep. Um, That's it. That's all I wanted to talk about. I missed this, Mike. Oh, me too. It was, it's been, uh, even though everyone has heard at least from one of us over the past few weeks, We've we haven't sat down to record in a few weeks, so yeah, twenty two days I think. Wow. So yeah, I have no, I've known nothing about the news for the past few weeks. I don't know anything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> These are big stories. <laughs> um, okay, I have a couple things too. Okay, before we start talking about passing, one is like probably a correction. Um, so uh, Hannah emailed us and said. Again, when people correct us, they're very nice. Um, mm-hmm. So she mm-hmm. said um, to make sure to use the word transgender and not transgendered. Right. Um, do you know this? Yeah. I do too. But so, but I'm sure we must have used it at some point, um, you know, on accident. Um, and she gave me like, this is really helpful. So if you don't know, like, yeah, using the word transgendered sounds like she said, you know, it sounds like really obvious in the trans community. Um, either you're new to being trans or you're an outsider that doesn't know. And the way she said to think about it is quote to us, it feels more like saying someone is mailed American or blacked. Like yeah. it's not a thing that happened to you or like, it's just part of who you are. So you wouldn't add an ED to the end of it. Uh, oh, also, I posted on Facebook to uh, like uh, gayest and straightest to get uh, solicit some gayest and straightest from our audience. Oh, yeah, that was fun. I really enjoyed it. I wanted to read a few of my favorites. I might do this on a more regular basis. Yeah. Um, but um, so we, we got a lot of great ones. I will read just a few of them. So um, if you had a really specific name, I don't want to say it. Oh, what? You f- bitches join the Facebook group. Oh, yeah. Facebook.com slash groups slash gayish podcast. Yeah. So don't give away too many of the good ones. Be- like, we want people to join the group. Okay. Yeah. This is just a teaser. This yes. is just a taste. I, I, I changed. You got to get them hooked. Okay. I changed my mind. These are the terrible ones. <laughs> <laughs> These are the worst of the worst. So the, the good ones are going to be great. Yeah. Um, some came along with pictures, actually. Well, just one. But okay. L. I'm not going to say his name because I thought it was too specific. He said his gayest thing ran into my friend at the bar. I greeted him. We kissed for a bit and just carried on with our conversation. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of hot. Um, straightest thing. I went to a gay bar and there were two things playing on the screen. Porn and the news. I was more focused on the news. Oh, oh. I don't recommend that these <laughs> days, but okay. <laughs> I well, okay. Th- this was my suggestion in the group is that if during the news every now and then it just played a little bit of porn, just like yeah. a hint of porn to be like this horrible thing happened. That's going to destroy everything. 
fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Here's the next thing that's going to destroy the rest of things. <laughs> anal, anal, anal. Like, <laughs> do, you, do you think that they could have just a, a hot guy read the news while getting blown? And well, this is almost like, a thing. Naked news. <laughs> yeah. Just add the sex parts. Oh, yeah. I don't think they, yeah. I don't think they go, go, go to fucking. Um, yeah, there's like news where like they actually are saying real news things. And during the course of the news, they are slowly stripping. <laughs> so great i started watching it once and then like and then i woke up hours later and was like i need to what am i doing here <laughs> still um okay james said his straightest thing was doing axe throwing at my bucks night what? i think it's like canadian or british that's like your uh bachelor bachelor party, party. yeah uh yeah, axe throwing. That sounds terrifying. That's not your straightest thing. That's your m most murderous thing. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> um, gayest thing was also at my Bucks night, turkey slapping one of my groomsmen in the face with an eight inch dildo. <laughs> turkey slapping? I also had to look that up. <laughs> I think I now forget. I think that's just like where you whack him in the face with it. Yeah, it, it sounds like a euphemism for for something Just you're doing weapon. with your dick yeah right? yeah it does it already yeah <laughs> um and then mark uh straightest went canoeing on lake ontario gayest fell out of a canoe into lake ontario <laughs> <laughs> um i loved a lot of them were like it was during the same thing that they were doing that they were like gay and straight things and i love that so much because it just even furthers the point of like even you, like one activity can have these this combination of things that people stereotypically think of as straight and gay and you know uh, again how stupid it is yeah. um so yeah join the group and find the actual good ones yeah <laughs> fuckers <laughs> fuckers oh no i'm nice Gen yeah. glorious fuckers yeah um <laughs> uh so now we're going to talk about passing let's talk about passing um man i'm i feel like there should be like a little bit of a preamble. This isn't the constitution pre -cum? from pre come from what I'm going to pre come into yours just a little bit <laughs> to tell you this. Like, um, so we're talking about passing and I don't, I don't want to make a judgment about what's, uh, easier, or harder. Actually, I kind of do. I think like people that don't have the choice to pass who are very obviously gay, have it a lot harder, especially mm -hmm. growing up. Um, but I guess I shouldn't say that there are different challenges with each version, like each thing that uh, people might do when they're growing up or not even do. It just happens to them. So we're just going to talk about passing and the challenges with that. That's not to say that, you know, the other option is bad or easier or anything. But this is what you and I know yeah. better than the the other experience. Yeah, sure. Um, OK, now we're ready for the full now we're going to shoot. Okay. Okay. So I'm yep. going to start with, um, it's not really numbers, but it's like more talking about passing overall in some studies I read. Okay. Um, so, well, I didn't realize like passing as a term um, can be used not just for gay stuff, but for like race and ethnicity or social class or religion or age. Uh, are you are you including trans stuff in the under the umbrella of gay? Uh, th that's a se that's a separate thing that I w was going to mention. Yeah, because I, I that that's where I think I hear the term most often mm. is is in is in the trans community. Of, yeah, of you know, do they pass as they... the gender that they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's weird because it's a little like it's kind of opposite. Like if you pass when you're gay or lesbian, it's like passing as straight, right. which is like you know not a good thing not being your true self like yeah. versus passing as a trans person um i don't know can be seen as a positive thing but um so actually podcast recommendation um there i looked up to see if there are any other podcasts about passing and there was one that i liked um it is called the gender rebels podcast and a trans woman talks about her uh, she's in a relationship with a woman and she's going home to visit her, uh, I don't, I think they're, I don't know, partners, friend, dating, whatever, uh, family. 
And so they talk about like the idea of passing and is that good or bad? And should that be the goal or not? So it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very different uh, things than uh, gay and lesbian people have to uh, think about. So that's a a separate thing to look at. Um, I suggest listening to that. Another thing is for bi people. Mm -hmm. um, Passing can mean like if you are kind of what we were talking about earlier if you are in um a seemingly straight relationship but you're bi then people may just assume that you are uh straight or yeah. or gay but not you know know that you're bi yeah so there's actually a podcast called queerology which talks about uh being queer and religion and religious Ooh. so if you like that and don't like when i make jokes about it and actually want to hear real people's genuine experiences um listen to that (laughs) and uh in season two it's the episode with rosemary jones and she talks about her experience being both religious and bi and also in a uh married to an opposite gender person are we supposed to have seasons did we fuck up by having the longest season ever (laughs) no no there's like season or episodic or something and we're we're just the one like you don't have to have listened to episode one to understand episode 30 in fact it's better if you don't <laughs> just <laughs> in fact just go ahead and skip right to episode 30 <laughs> i always think about like if there's when i like first listen to a podcast they'll like say things and i'll be like i don't get this joke and i get that that's an inside joke i wonder yeah. if we have any of those yeah i mean nose blasting yeah by the way hmm. if you're new nose blasting <laughs> is a process that we have simulated Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the podcast where you place, I think you, I think it's placing your nose into an orifice, but more specifically, probably the anus. It it can be whatever you want it to be, Kyle. (laughs) It's the beauty of, but it's nose sex. It has to involve your nose in some way. Yes. Do you think it can like be sticking a smaller nose up a bigger nose? Sure. All right. Wow, you're doing like really broad definition. Or, or it could be like fingering clear up to your like fourth knuckle. <laughs> Fisting your nose. Yes. Ow. <laughs> Man. Okay. So hi, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Sometimes we talk about fucking noses. Um, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Um, uh, and a quote I found from a, a writer, Tina Giannoulis is <laughs> quote <laughs> always so good I'm at the not names. gonna uh, quote since heterosexuality is usually assumed most gay men and lesbians in fact spend a great deal of their lives passing as straight even when they n- do not do so intentionally yeah which is like really interesting like you know I think about passing of like I'm pretending to be straight I'm hiding my gay features so that I can pass but yeah when you're walking around the world probably most people especially most straight people just assume that you are a straight person okay you said that you know i I was thinking through it like i i I, hmm. hopefully we're getting to this place where it's that you're assumed neutral yeah right yeah like if you're making out with somebody of the opposite gender then that's different yeah but you just run into a random person at the grocery store i don't know that I think about them as being straight or gay. It's just hmm. until there's evidence, right? Yeah. Like evidence like cargo shorts? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's straight, by the way. The athletic apparel with mm. the name of a team. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sporting. Yep. Totally. Uh, but but the, 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 point, the, the point being, like, I don't know how I feel about that. Because I also know that the presumption of straightness is for sure a part of the culture. That you are assumed to be straight until proven gay. Yeah. And then do one gay thing and good luck getting back mm. the straight label. Yep. But I don't, I don't know. What don't you know about? Like, she's not saying you should do that. It's just like, what happens? I was worried that what she was saying was that like for the, for the gay person, like some, something bad is happening to them. Uh, well, let me tell you. Okay, go ahead. So... Uh, there are actually bad things that are happening. Not if you're like accidentally, like other people think whatever they want about you and they don't say it like whatever. But if you are actively suppressing being gay, uh, AKA my teens, um, (laughs) then like there are, there is a lot of damage that happens by trying to pass or passing as straight. Sure. And this is something that I like only figured out recently. And then like looking this up, I'm like, oh, fuck, this is a thing. I wish someone would have told me Uh, like I always like felt guilty for all my internalized homophobia and all the issues that I had because 
Um, I wasn't um, out. I wasn't bullied. I wasn't beat up. I wasn't called a faggot. Maybe once, but like, um, and he he stopped after he stopped fucking me. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> Like, but there are all, like, I, so I read this, um, meta study of a bunch of studies, including like LGBT specific studies, but then also just included things that are similar. So for example, on the emotional side, like, uh, in this meta study, they talked about, for example, women who have had abortions and keep it secret, then they spend all this time thinking about the secret that they're keeping and it makes it, them actually think more about it rather than less. So it's this weird, like you're trying to put up defenses by not sharing it with anyone, but then it actually has a bigger strain on you emotionally than if you did share it. Yeah. Okay. No, that, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, uh, coming it, out of the closet is like an abortion. It's, <laughs> <laughs> you're like aborting your, the straight baby that they had. And you're now this new gay baby that they just birthed in as a adult. Yep. <laughs> identical experiences yep um so there yeah and, and just this idea of like you know i i hadn't thought really thought about it in this these terms until i read it of you're doing something to protect yourself and sometimes it makes sense because you may get killed or kicked out and you you know there there are a lot of good reasons to do this yeah but in cases like mine where you know i would thought i was doing it to protect myself it actually did more damage than good. No. Yeah. Um, and then th I thought this was a really good, I think it's hard to describe, but this was a really good description from, uh, someone, <laughs> a person, a person that <laughs> wrote this. doesn't matter if you knew their name, you'd fuck oh. it up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about this whole part of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> where you just make fun of me no it's true this i can do hetrick and martin study from 1987 so fuckers knew this back in 1987 and i just figured it out now okay they said quote individuals in such a position must constantly monitor their behavior in all circumstances how one dresses speaks walks and talks becomes constant sources of possible discovery one must limit one's friends, one's interests, and one's expressions for fear that they might be found guilty by association. The individual who must hide of necessity learns to interact on the basis of deceit governed by fear of discovery. Each successive act of deception, each moment of monitoring, which is unconscious and automatic for other, others, serves to reinforce the belief that one's in one's difference and inferiority. When I was an early teen... I hated, detested videos of myself mm. because my wrists were too gay. Oh. And I, I, I loathed myself um, mm. on, on camera. And it's really interesting how, like, that's like, at least to me, I looked like I was failing to pass. Mm -hmm. And that made me feel even worse. Okay, this is really interesting. So I'll tell you a little bit about um, from the trans um, the episode called Passing from the Gender Rebels podcast is um, they have this game um, called uh, Clock the Sis. So clocking someone is generally like, oh, you're trans. Like you, you figured it out. Oh. Um, but they clock the sis. So what they do, cisgender person, so someone who is biologically the gender that they are in their head oh okay that's a good quick to they identify as the gender they were assigned at birth thanks they're soups transgendered <laughs> I'm, it was, i feel like my definition was close don't say transgendered um but what they do is they look at cis people or they assume cis people because who actually knows and identify traits that seem like the opposite gender so a woman with broad shoulders a short man a like and what you actually realize is like exactly what we talk about in in stereotypes is everyone actually has some of these qualities that make them seem you know a little bit effeminate or a little bit masculine you know yeah. different than their assigned gender so i think that's totally true like you know you looked at your wrist like other people have these traits that they may get made fun of for seeming gay or 
you know, and it, they might not actually be, but you know, everyone has those characteristics. Yeah. But yeah, you definitely like have a, I remember, um, when I learned that I couldn't trust my interests, my, like I, uh, really liked Hanson. And then I learned that that was gay to like Hanson. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and this is one I couldn't like, I had already like very strongly like been into it listened to the cd told people about it so there was no like no getting around i had liked it but that's when i learned like the the constant deceit is something i really relate to of like everything you do is checking yourself making sure it's okay yeah. and making sure that you you look to everyone else to like what they like and do what they do yeah 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 also hansen is gay apparently mm. they were very pretty they were so they still are a couple, <laughs> well like one and a half of them <laughs> um so then there's also health side effects this is super cray cray okay so cole are you gonna tell me i'm gonna die uh well you are well, i wasn't going to <laughs> but you are gonna die <laughs> that's true you don't know that that's true oh wow okay your secret Russian agent status <laughs> might have just gone up by a little bit. Like, I plan on uploading my consciousness into the internet before I die, thereby ensuring I live forever. <laughs> Apologize to the internet before you do that. <laughs> okay, so this guy, Cole, et al. in 1996, which sucks for people that have last names that are later than C. Cole gets all the credit. He's a coal miner? He's a coal miner! <laughs> Hey, Cole, have you considered reading census forms <laughs> and writing them down? It's a good job uh, that doesn't exist yet. Okay, so he found that. Okay. Are you broken? <laughs> <laughs> He'd found two things, and I was trying to figure out which one was less interesting to say first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he found, ah, oh man, now you know, like, don't pay attention to this one because the next one's better. Okay. He found that for HIV negative men, those who concealed their sexual orientation were more likely to have health problems than those who were open about their sexual orientation. So they had more doctor's visits and uh, more I illnesses, more issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he also found that uh, HIV infection advanced more rapidly among men who concealed their sexual orientation than those who are open about their sexual orientation gay or straight you know it's just there are some studies that happen and you just do them and you put them all together and you give some results and these are just what comes out of them i see <laughs> <laughs> did i just win miss america or yep. what yep. um i don't know well, also, I assume they're talking about gay people. Uh, but, like, gay men who concealed their sexual orientation, so, I don't know. But, like, your health is worse off because you're concealing your identity. Sure, yeah. Um, which, like, it, I didn't realize, like, that to me was, like, cray town to the max of, like, I, the fact that HIV can infect you more by not being out. Yeah. Uh, um, you don't seem as shocked as I do. I mean, it, it makes sense to me that anxiety and stress really take a toll on a person's body. Mm. And I think that holding in secrets is stressful and anxiety provoking and therefore would have negative health benefits. Just like an abortion. Yep. Um, I also, I actually realize like, now as an adult every time i talk to my parents i'm like oh, yeah, that's where i got that thing you know like i just am piecing together pieces of myself um and i was talking is about that what jules pieces of you is about uh yes it's also what ashley simpson pieces of me are about wow is about what other pieces song? cut my life into pieces that's where we stop <laughs> when we get to last resort that is my Great. last resort joke to go to okay uh i can't think of anything but ashley simpson oh Great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how your does parents, it... You said that your parents, now you realize, oh, that's where I got this thing, right. that's oh, where I got that thing. Thank you. You're welcome. You were listening to me. I do. Listen, I listen to you. I just don't always respond. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that all you heard was, ah, yeah, 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 you're talking way too much. I can't even... Ashley Simpson song. Never mind. Uh, you're too young. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was talking to my dad, and he was talking about some, like... 
he had a stroke. He has something in his heart to help monitor his heart. You weren't listening. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I don't want to like go into the whole, that's a longer story that is, um, so he was like, yeah, you like keep thinking about it. And like, I don't like that it's in there. And he's like, doesn't take medication. Doesn't, he's really healthy other than the stroke that he had. Um, and he, he doesn't like that, but he's like, but it's not causing me any, like, it's not physically hurting. Um, it's not like, so I, like, I guess, you know, I'll keep it in there. And I was like, well, but like the fact that you're thinking about it, worried about it, don't like it. Like that's something like, you know, he's completely discounted the mental part of it and yeah. only thought about the physical part. He's like, well, it's not physically hurting me, so it's fine. Yeah. And I realized like, oh, right. That's, that's a stupid boy way to think about the world. I mean, yeah, like not that not thinking that you're feeling how you feel about something is valid yeah. or important or matters. Yeah. yeah. Why is Kyle fucked up? <laughs> <laughs> Number 12. There was that there was that surgeon a million years ago who did like it was a gynecologist, I think, or, or, a, or a surgeon. And he wrote his initials on the inside of a woman with the oh. laser. And, Ew. And th- she sued his ass for malpractice. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was teeny tiny. So mm-hmm. you can't see it, can't feel it, has absolutely zero impact. But he, in photographs, had his initials, like, like he was an artist or something. And just the mental impact of that, the emotional impact of that, she won a fuck ton of money as well. She should. Yeah. Even though had she not found out, she wouldn't know. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, (laughs) uh, last one is, uh, social, like socially, this one is the most, makes the most sense to me of, um, by, uh, associating with people that are like you face the same stigmas as you, you get that reinforcement of social, you know, other people that are out share the same experiences and having that community is really important. So, you know, passing involves not telling people about it, which means not being able to find that community and not being able to have the kind of social support structure that uh, other people may have or communities that other people have. Yeah. So, I mean, the summary is there are lots of ways that uh, passing can fuck you up. And I am <laughs> another example. See figure 12, Kyle. <laughs> it's a picture of me. <laughs> Secrets are terrible, man. I, yeah. And yeah, it just also goes to show like, you know, there are, I don't think there are as many things that are as big as being gay, but yeah, like we talk about having to come out about a lot of different things, not yeah. just like the abortion example, telling people you've had an abortion, that's you telling people you have depression, telling people you've been raped. Like there's so many things that you, you know, people may keep as a secret, but getting it out there when it's safe, you know, to do, it has a lot of positive effects. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> big sigh you okay it's sad <laughs> it's okay yeah i haven't um yeah uh let's talk about let's go to something like a little more interesting we're going to talk about you in russia russia you went to oh this will be a test of how well i remember you you went to vladivost Vla, vladivostok vladivostok yeah. and then took the train uh Sub- siberian orchestra train the the trans-siberian <laughs> railway yes yeah. uh and you went all the way to the west so you stopped in like moscow and st petersburg yes and then am i getting all this right so far yeah i mean i i the train from vladivostok to moscow is a six day train ride i cut that in half and i stopped in irkutsk which is about three days in irkutsk is on lake baikal which is the largest freshwater lake in the world wow yeah did you drink from it no, but it's fucking cold. I put my foot in there and mm. like I, it was it, despite being July, it was only like 36 degree water or some shit. Wow. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you kept going to Moscow. Moscow. Yeah. And then to St. Petersburg and then ended in Berlin for pride for Berlin pride. Yeah. Did you see a bunch of butts? So many butts. <laughs> so many butts. What, what was the difference between like prides you've been to in Seattle and very similar. Although I, oh. I will say that um, the the Berlin Pride Parade lasted like two and a half hours, which even that feels a little long. Like the Seattle Pride Parade is like four and a half hours or something crazy. Really? We are. Yeah, oh. I'm gay. I don't have that kind of attention span. <laughs> <laughs> 
I never make it to the parade. I'm always too hungover. <laughs> Aw, you won up to me with a little bit gayer thing. Yep. doop a doo doo <laughs> uh, Passing. Passing. Russia. Yeah, so how was it... Uh, did you feel like you had to try to pass, or did you feel like you could be yourself? Uh... No and no. So hmm. um, it's interesting when you're in a place like Russia because gay people are so invisible, are so suppressed, are so on the outside of the mainstream. There's actually a presumption of straightness, even if you don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> no, if you don't, what do you mean? I mean, like, like if there's just are no gay people, if you see no gay people, if all symbols of gayness are completely removed then even the most l l lispy, limp-wristed dude is still presumed straight. Mm. Um, so they don't have the like same, like there are some cues that people would pick up on, uh, right or wrong, that would be like, oh, I think this person's gay. Yep. And they just don't. But it's like the whole the whole culture, the whole society just has blinders on to anything other than straight. It's like the word gay doesn't even exist. So you can't, accidentally be caught being gay because that's not even something they're looking for because it doesn't exist wow. does, that, does that make sense it does yeah. but it's so crazy to like just think of an entire country that can just pretend and yeah. not deal with things yeah well and, and there's some, some interesting things that fall out of that too like i saw men touching each other in public in, in like in a, in a platonic way but they would they would like hug each other or put their arm around each other or like they they would walk closer than straight dudes do in uh, the united states like huh. and again that's part of the, the like you don't have to pass because there's no other alternative hmm. so people don't and like here because people are aware that gay people is a thing then some straight people may worry about it and change their behavior so that they're not seen as gay that's really interesting that they may do some things that involve like like more touching of dudes and more huh our eye contact they make really good eye contact because when you look like straight guys anyway i think don't look each other in the eye because that's too intimate mm. that's too almost gay <laughs> um but again that that doesn't really exist or it's not a thing and uh, so I found a lot of sort of uncomfortable eye contact <laughs> <laughs> from that, people having when I was having conversations with them. That could also be cultural, right? Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely could be. But I'm just saying the things that I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you have a podcast. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a great, it's a great place for that. It's fucking 2018. You can just say whatever shit you want to and believe it. And hey, yeah, nobody can tell you any different. <laughs> <laughs> this is the truth and prove me prove me wrong yeah. and if you try to it's photoshop it's a stretch to call this passing but uh gay bars in russia have to pass as something other than a bar something other than gay mm. um you went into a gay bar in moscow okay i tried to go to a gay bar in irkutsk couldn't find it and the uh. reason i couldn't find it and i did some more research and then got wise later on is that there is no sign there is no you don't know that it's a bar it's, it's just a random ass door on a block that you just have to know that behind that door is where the gay bar is mm. um so in irkutsk i couldn't find it and then after trolling the block like twice i had this thought oh my god if i'm seen walking this block too much they're going to know that i'm looking for the gay bar and I, that's unsafe so i only gave myself like two goes down the street and then i went home oh um that's probably smart but like that's crazy yeah you don't have to think about that because it, as invisible as it is it is a bar it doesn't move right it's like, <laughs> like that's the spot right yeah, yeah so anybody who hated gay people enough to track them down to do bad things to them would know this is the zone right yeah yeah uh in moscow i read up on it and found a, a bar two bars actually that were relatively easy to find and get into and they still were totally innocuous you would walk right by it and not know oh this is the door to a gay bar hmm. there's no signage there's no anything you just have to know that's the door 
buzz the buzzer <laughs> and the like the little slider with just eyes behind it opens up to make sure that you aren't a, a hate group or something <laughs> and then they let you in did they do the fi- you talked about face control face control yeah did they did they face control you no but it's because it's because you're beautiful so <laughs> they would just be like i'd give you a face to control um <laughs> <laughs> no, they, um, uh, I went on, I was never in one of the big cities on the weekend except for Berlin, which is super fucking gay. Right, right, right. And and by the way, I know this much about geography. That's not in Russia. Right. I'm going to go ahead and let everyone know. Correct. Outside of Russia. You're correct. You're <laughs> thank, correct. Thank you. Um, uh, turns out that the gay bars aren't that crazy busy in the first place. They're especially not crazy busy on a Wednesday. <laughs> so. I mean, that's kind of true. <laughs> a lot of places, but yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was totally empty. So there's there were no faces to control. Oh, okay. What was it like on the inside? Like a regular old gay bar. Hmm. Lots of lots of lights and neon and rainbows and glitter and. Do they have like flags and flags? Oh. N- naked poster, naked dudes on posters. Oh wow! Um, Did you, and you went to a gay bar in Saint Petersburg. Yeah, so Saint Petersburg actually is the gayest of all of the places that I went to in Russia, um, and I know that that's a low bar. <laughs> yeah, but um, they actually had signage, so I didn't have to uh. guess what door it was. The 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 door itself it was a small sign but it said this is a central station this is mm. this is the bar that you can go to mean like signage meaning like the name of it not gay bar or a flag correct or, oh, correct man but at the very least you knew that that was the right door <laughs> that you weren't just going to end up randomly in an alley or something yeah right? it, it, like okay this is the place i found oh, it man okay i want to know i was very nervous I'm very glad you're alive. Yeah. Because I was very nervous when you got on the uh, Russian version of Scruff. Hornet. Hornet. Mm-hmm. As Which in, there's, I, I'm, I have checked Hornet a couple of times here in the States, and it's not super densely populated, but there's, it's in use here too. Huh. Um, what was it like in, uh, in Russia? I was nervous that there was going to be like a, s- <gasps> the people that captured you and traded your brain, they're probably from Hornet and yep. you, you don't even know it happened. You're like a sleeper agent. Is that what a sleeper agent is? Or is it just a tired agent? Anyway, <laughs> this is what happens when you leave is I just thoughts, all these thoughts fall out of my brain towards you in your direction. I don't need you to say anything to them. I just, they're happening to to you. I get it. Well, Hornet. Yeah, what was it like? Uh, everywhere but St. Petersburg, it was very obvious that nobody was showing their face. Mm. So it was all headless torsos or backs of heads in in pretty places. Um, and artfully done for what that's worth. But Great. there there were zero faces in profile pics on Hornet. Did you have a face? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Mike! What? That's how you die. No, I. Th- I mean, I think. I think that the fear there is just not being n- known. Like I'm traveling through. It's not like for somebody to identify me and track me down. And it just. I, I thought that that was super implausible. Mm, okay. Um, except in Saint Petersburg, I noticed that then there were faces on Hornet, and so that was interesting to me. Basically, Saint Petersburg is pretty cool. Mm. Go, go for it. I would live there if it weren't for the whole like maybe dying thing. <laughs> um did you fuck anyone um hooked up okay no fucking no fucking okay i went home with a 20 year old from Ooh. the bar in st petersburg um it's almost half your age i know good for you right and he, uh Sergey, I know that you aren't listening. <laughs> I know you're not listening because you don't really speak English. <laughs> um, Be the wrong podcast for you. <laughs> but yeah, move somewhere better. <laughs> move somewhere better. Okay. We hung out at the bar. He heard that I was an American. He wanted to talk to me. When he found out I was from Seattle, he geeked out about Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Apparently they're on like season four there now. Um, oh, I'm kidding. I'm oh, kidding. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, but he. I was like, I have bad news for you yeah. about basically <laughs> all the cast yeah. except Meredith. Um, and and Doctor Bailey and Karev. Are they still doing that thing? Yeah, there's four. There's four characters that have been in every episode. I was looking this up because I was talking to Sergey about Grey's Anatomy, oh. and there's four characters that have been in every episode. It's Doctor Bailey, Meredith, uh, Karev. 
and uh, Weber, Chief Weber. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, we got really, really drunk, made out a whole bunch at the bar. Then he came home with me and all we did was cuddle. And then uh, we got up in the morning and um, messed around, just hand jobs and making out. But it was still really awesome. HJs and MOs. And then we went to breakfast and then we parted. Huh. Are you gonna, did you get his address? Are you going to be pen pals or something? Uh, we've been Instagramming <gasps> since. Wait. Oh. Do you use Instagram now? Just to talk to Sergey. <laughs> Wait, you can talk to people? Oh, no. People have sent me messages and I p- replied. Okay, never mind. I do know this about Instagram. You sound twice your age now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, I, I, I was saying all of that because I think being gay is so not a thing. He really just... The, the foundation of the evening that we had together was simply connecting with another gay person oh like i remember that yeah there was just it was it was really it was really intimate and refreshing in in a a non-sexual way just to (laughs) other than the hand job (laughs) that was later (laughs) that was later but but just uh the, the the fact that that you could you could talk to another gay person and hold another gay person touch another gay person was really was really special and interesting hmm I'm going to cry. Oh. I mean, I'm not. But well, if I had more feelings, I would right here. <laughs> if I were a normal human with, with <laughs> emotional... Yeah, if I didn't get all that damage from trying to pass, yeah, then right. I wouldn't cry right now. <laughs> no, that's like both really sweet that he got to have that connection and really sad that he's 20 and, and you know, seeking out, like, and that's, you know, one of the few, yep. if not only connections he's had. Yep. Yep. Good job. Maybe that's my emotions coming out. Maybe I can't <laughs> cry. I just like release them in the form of smelly gas. That would be preferable, I think, if you <laughs> yeah. could just like pound a fizzy drink and yeah. just got rid of all your feelings. Yeah. yeah, but when they come out up down bottom, it's less good. Okay, so are you on our time zone yet? Uh, like my body. Or I mean, your body, your mind, your nose. No, no, no. Still kind of fucked up that way, but that's okay. Well, you're doing real good. Thanks. Yeah, you look like a person. You're acting like a person. Thanks. Um, if you don't laugh at any of my jokes, I'm just gonna pretend like it's because you're in a different time zone. Yep. Um, what's oh. what's what do you usually tell yourself <laughs> <laughs> that you're in a different time zone? <laughs> um, so now we're gonna talk. I. We're going to talk about, you know, more personal stories and more about, you know, we both of us had experiences, different experiences, but experiences passing. Um, So um, I will start talking about my experience passing. And, you know, I was referring to it when I, like, realized all these studies and all of this shit that happens when um, you are gay trying to pass as straight, but this is all stuff I did not know before. And like I mentioned, you know, my family wasn't big on, I mean, gay aside, we weren't big on like just sharing anything about your feelings or emotions. So yeah, for me growing up, I, from an early age, remember liking my little pony and wanting to brush my mom's hair. And I, it was really special when I got to put water on her hair to like brush it. That was like a, um, so there were like all these things, but then I think eventually I just learned that it was bad to be gay. And I don't know the exact thing that I learned. Like my parents weren't religious or super outwardly homophobic. Like they didn't, you know, walk around being like fags are destroying this country or, you right, know, like right, right. They, it wasn't one of that situations. And even at school, it wasn't like everyone was like, everyone was religious, but not, I don't know, someone, uh, one of my super religious, uh, I was gonna say coworkers, but I was in like, <laughs> what, what did coworkers when you're a kid at school? For classmates? Fellows, classmates? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fellow students. <laughs> one of my childhood coworkers, uh, told me <laughs> that I was going to hell just cause I wasn't religious. So like, it, just I, I, w- I was going to ask, do you think that you got the message that being gay was bad from maybe school more so than your family? Probably. Yeah, I think like not being religious was really weird um, at my school. So like I there was one other girl, Jingy. 
She's the best. Um, Jingy. Jingy. Jingy and I were called each other like we were both lost souls that like because everyone is religious. So, you know, um, yeah. So maybe it was more from school. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, f- something about me, um, I think especially because I am really sensitive and really emotional person. That's just by nature who I am. That's there's no changing that part of me. Um, like if people didn't like something I liked or were mad at me, uh, I hated that feeling. So I learned really early that I had to listen to other people like what they liked, say what they said. Um, and so I learned to ignore who I was learned to ignore my interests, how I acted you know th- that's why that quote from whoever that person was that said like every like l- everything about me was a lie and a deceit yeah um and i think that's how i learned that i wasn't valuable because it wasn't what i cared about or liked it was like to get around it was all about everyone else and yeah. what they liked and i i did not even piece this together and the the fact that i didn't have my own sense of self-worth until like a few years ago in therapy when it was like you know like that was the root you know when we like got down to the root struggle it was like do i have any value like that's what i and i've gotten to the point where like i do now realize that i have value but i have to remind myself and i have to like keep working on my own self-confidence and it you 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 have value and it's you're on sale. Dollar <laughs> seventy five, maybe twenty percent off, <laughs> but there's at least some value here. Um, I'm worth at least two ninety nine. <laughs> Go Great. ahead and put that out there. Yeah, and so like I I it, yeah, it wasn't until later that I connected that I always valued everyone else's opinion over mine because theirs was right and mine was gay, um, and uh, you know to like my lack of self-confidence and and ideas of self-worth. And so like now just the act of sitting down and thinking like, what do I want to do? What do I care about? How do I feel about this coat? Like instead of just defaulting to what everyone else thinks or believes, like that is a really like, that's a big accomplishment for me to remember that. Yeah. Um, And especially being creative, like writing something. And if you get negative feedback, it's like, well, do I agree with that or not? I'm allowed to disagree with other people. I'm allowed to not take other people's opinions. And like all that is new for me to figure out. Yeah. Especially when all of those things are so automatic, you have to work at changing those things about yourself. Yeah. It just happens. You just learn how to do it automatically. Totally. Yeah. I, yeah, I learned how to easily lie and convince people I'm this thing and use other people's input rather than my own. And yeah, that's like the natural thing is other people are right and I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, so even like saying no to people is really uncomfortable for me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of like issues that come out of that. So like this is that I, to me, that is all the like psychological damage that came out of me trying to pass and, and, you know, spending the first 20 years of my life, lying working at being someone a little bit different than who i am yeah yeah absolutely have you well first have you forgiven yourself for not coming out earlier for lying oh it's a big question no i don't think so i don't think i have and have you gotten to the point where you can realize that you weren't really lying about everything yeah that is, i yeah i um because there, there's there's a difference between i was lying about these things and here are the reasons why and everything about me was a lie yeah yeah i right? wasn't that's true i wasn't like a totally different person um but i was like you know 30 percent different or whatever like, right right yeah i don't think i've i think i need to I haven't thought about it, but I do think I need to work on like forgiving myself for that because, you know, I'm really hard on myself and well, why didn't I come out earlier or why didn't I realize it earlier? or Why wasn't, you know, other people like like, you said hard on, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love dicks. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I th- I should I should forgive myself for not coming. I, I'm like jealous. I don't know if jealous is the right word, but like jealous or have insecurity. Like when people say they came out in high school or even yeah. earlier, I'm like, I didn't, and I probably could have, and still lived at home and still done all that stuff. So why didn't I? Yeah. Um, yeah, but I didn't, and. I guess I just need to move forward from that. I also then realized like a lot of, I hid a lot of other things from people. Like I, I didn't show people my true self, like being a writer and wanting to write. I didn't tell anyone that cause I was like embarrassed by it. And yeah. like, now I'm yeah. realizing like, Oh, other things that I hid about myself are because who knows what you might reveal that would then be made fun of or be, be the thing that outs you or um so like learning to lie about yeah you're right not all of myself but there's one card in particular that you're most terrified about showing but that teaches you to hold all of your cards close anyway yeah 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 and especially like when you're learning you when you don't know what's gay and straight and you have to learn from other people yeah you don't know which thing you're going to reveal that's going to accidentally be gay and be the thing that it's, it's probably your butthole <laughs> <laughs> the moment you reveal your butthole and say put it in me then that's <laughs> when people know uh no straight dudes can put stuff in their butts too because they got a pleasure button there um but yeah it's hard it's really hard yeah i don't know there's a really dark place in here somewhere that is really angry, really, really angry at having to live for 30 years on this planet doing these things that we're talking about, lying, putting on airs. And uh, I don't know if it's ever going to go away. I think it's just something to honor and manage is there anyone or anything in particular your your anger gets focus on me i mean i i mean the root cause is society right yeah, yeah. and in the absence of a target that i can actually target i turn all of that in on myself of like why did i God, why, why did I, why was I in the closet in college? Why did I get married to a woman? Why did I wait so long? Like, it seems like so much wasted time. Yeah. And, um, I'm, I'm mad about that. And I'm mad at myself because ultimately I was the one that could change it. Cause I did. Yeah. I think once you realize that you can change it that's an awesome thing that you're like oh like actually this is something that i can come out and be myself and but then you're like ah shit i was still myself or before so i could have done it before even if you weren't ready emotionally or whatever yep. have you forgiven yourself um i don't know not explicitly hmm. not like out loud there's that scene in Goodwill Hunting where Robin Williams says it's not your fault like 1400 times in a row and then Matt Damon like loses his shit yeah yeah that that would happen pretty easy with me yeah <laughs> oh, God. um okay we're gonna do something right now no we're not gonna do it I don't know maybe what are you saying we're gonna forgive ourselves oh no Mm-mm. no we're not gonna do that I couldn't do it you can't do that no why not uh, I don't know. Huh. Is it because it's on the podcast or just in general? Uh, bo- both. Either one. What do you think is holding you back from forgiving yourself for it? I don't know. I don't either. It sucks that, like, you're absolutely right. Society should be the people, the people, or, like, the thing that we blame for this, and we have to take it all on our shoulders, and that's not what... 
that's not what kids should have to do. Right. Like the act of every moment thinking about you looking at your wrists and how your wrists are like thinking about every move of your body, every interest that you express, like that's hard work. Yeah. And you don't realize the, the toll it takes on you until you really think like, holy shit. Like that was, you know, I was acting for so much of my life. I deserve an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Even more than Leo. Yeah. I know, right? Oh, uh, I, I meant like Oscar De La Hoya, the boxer, because he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar De La Renta? De La Renti. De La Renti? De La Hoya. De, isn't, that, also, isn't that a fashion designer? Fuck it. I want a Cristiano. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I deserve a Cristiano. Um, damn. I don't know where we're at now. Me neither. Me neither. Um, well, I'm sad. That's that's one place I'm at. Yeah, gayish. Gayish. Well, okay. <laughs> if you're new, nose lasting, and you're sometimes sad a lot. Um, do you, is that is that all we have to say about it, or? And I'm sure we have a lot more to say about it. Yeah. It's definitely not going to get all solved in one episode. Yeah. Even though we may not be able to forgive ourselves, or at least right now, I will at least say to other people who either currently are in the closet or lying about who they are or have done that in the past, it is not your fault. And I, we both clearly understand how hard it is if we can't do it quite yet but if you can forgive yourself and and let yourself move on from what you had to do what you were forced by other people to do to be happy yep struggling with authenticity yeah is a lesson i think that i'm gonna have to be working on for a long time yeah me too Oh my God, look at this wine. Hello. <laughs> it's so nice <laughs> to see you. Have you been in my mouth yet? It's great. <laughs> Should we take a break? Let's definitely take so much of a break. <laughs> uh, I will take a break now. Das Vidania? I don't know. I was going there and then it was. Okay, yeah, let's take a break. Let's take a break. <laughs> this is the part where Mike and Kyle take a break. <laughs> more feelings coming out <laughs> get out of their feelings no one wants you are we back we're back <laughs> we're back uh we're gonna do our gayest and straightest but first i can't <laughs> i don't know just the idea of my feelings expressing <laughs> themselves in the form of gaseous like it's just okay <laughs> before whatever i agree with what you said and what do we do now we haven't uh, done this in a while. Our website is gayishpodcast.com. Our, we have, I don't, or do we talk about this? Our, uh, we have a new Facebook page. I don't know how this shit works. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> Go to Facebook and search for gayish and there, there's a group and there's also a new page that we're going to figure out. So join the group, like the page. And yeah, we'll see how, and then we also have Instagram and Twitter at gayish podcast. And YouTube. And YouTube.com slash gayish podcast. Mm-hmm. Our hotline, we get text messages and voicemails, is 5855-GAYISH. That's 585-542-9474. Standard rates apply, which is like 35 cents a minute from Russia if you pay AT&T for their global network connection thing. Yeah, you, you paid... I had text messaging. Least, but you paid a couple 30 cent fees because yeah. I called you. But uh, our email is gayishpodcast at gmail.com. Also, we are going to be doing a live show. Yeah, we are. In New Orleans. In New Orleans. I was going to look this information up before, but... New Orleans. <laughs> As... So, so uh, at the end of June, we did the live streaming for Pride 48, and that turned into our episode about... Water sports. Water sports. Uh, this time, we're going to be doing the Pride 48 live event with a bunch of other queer podcasts who are all getting together uh, the weekend of 
uh, August 24th through 26th. Seventh, yeah, you great. Know so much about it. Um, we're going on. We're performing live on August twenty fifth. Um, so if you want to check that out, uh, go to pride forty eight dot com and you'll see an event tab and you can learn about getting tickets for the Pride forty eight and uh, not only see us but see a bunch of other super cool gay podcasts. Which, by the way, now that we know that there's going to be a bunch of other queer podcasts there at the same event, mm-hmm. I want to dominate them all. Oh yeah, yeah. You want to like dom top them like right down the bottom? Going to bend every one of them over. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you might do that literally if you find some good. Yeah, I mean, except the lesbians. I don't think that they would want that. I mean, okay. I've been seeing uh, like some like mask women that I'm like I would. I would bend over. For, hmm. That's a separate thing. Anyway, we're doing a live show. We don't know what we're talking about yet or yeah, but just put that on your calendars. If you live in new Orleans or the surrounding country. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> gayest and straightest. This is our gayest and straightest. Uh, so the gayest thing about me this week, um, I was in Berlin for Berlin pride. Oh, we didn't even talk about Berlin pride. That's well, okay. We did a little bit, a little bit. It was really gay. It's right. fine. It was super gay. It was fun. <laughs> Uh, I really enjoyed it. I saw so much foreskin. Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But prostitution is legal in Berlin. And so multiple times I would be talking to somebody and they would then let me know how how much it cost to fuck them if I wanted to. (laughs) And um, this one guy wouldn't leave me alone. Like I ran into him at two different bars on two different nights. His name was Emiliano. (laughs) And... I've said lots of gay things already, but the, the, the gayest thing about me this week was that I got him to go away by just saying, okay, look, do you have a big dick? <laughs> and then when he said no, I, I just, I had it in my head, no matter what he said, that wasn't going to be what I wanted. Right. So when he said no, I was like, well, I only like him huge. No, thank you. And <laughs> so if he was like, yes, it's 12 inches, uh, elephants. Uh, uh, you're not putting that in me. Go yeah. away. Yeah. Um, anyway. Good call. Yeah. Uh, the strangest thing about me this week uh, so I'm going to make it kind of sad, actually. So Sergey and I did the. We woke up and had had hand jobs and, and breakfast, and then <laughs> <laughs> there were whites involved in both. Yeah, when, I, uh, when I left, I was headed to the airport to fly to Berlin, uh, and he waited for me and waited with me for the cab. And when the cab got there. It was the straightest bro hug ever oh, yeah. that we gave each other because we were standing outside on the sidewalk in Russia. So despite having had this like really awesome, super intimate touch and dicks experience <laughs> and then to go from that to just like later, bro, <laughs> was pretty straight. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's um, I didn't tell you about my equally crazy travel experience where I went to Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Is that the theme song for Santa Fe? Because it's about as e- equally appealing as the city. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I, lo- I, had, I had a lot of fun. Uh, my friends are the shit. Um, and I'm not even going to, like, I had, I have a lo- I've collected a lot of gay and straight things, but, like, I'll just move on from their gays. My, um, the women that I, I'm trying not to say girls, because, like, it's women. The women. Ladies. But it's so weird to be, like, the women I went with. They're, like, my friends. I don't know. But they, do, they talked about their periods, and I learned a lot about periods. Yeah. Listen to your lady friends talk about periods for just, like, ten minutes. You'll learn a whole bunch. Yeah. Um, men are horrible. Well, but, and Josh Glassy talked about periods. Yeah. And how much explaining he yeah. can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's not what I'm talking about. I just remembered that. But my gayest thing, you haven't mentioned this yet. I painted my fingernails. I was working really hard to not. Why were you not saying that? So that it was okay. Oh. It's not a thing. Doesn't matter. Oh. Um, I painted, I've wanted to paint my fingernails for a long time and I finally did it. They are dark blue on one hand. Um, I bite my fingernails. So I've been like waiting. I've been like, oh, okay, I'll stop biting my fingernails, have great nails and then I'll paint them. But like, that's the perfectionist side of me. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I have weird, ugly nails and I'm just going to paint them cause I want to. Yeah. And I, that's making me actually not bite them. Yeah. So like, cause nail polish tastes disgusting. N- nail polish <laughs> doesn't taste good, but then I also no, it's mostly just that it doesn't taste good. That's, that's the real reason, but I kind of like it. Good. Um, 
and no one's hate crime yet. So Good. I also like have people said things to you? No. No. No one has said anything and you know, I think I saw like one dude on the um train looking at it, but like it doesn't, you know, that doesn't really matter that much and I, what I didn't realize is like, I don't think I have any like super obvious outward signs, speaking of passing super obvious outward signs of being queer. So like, I'm not doing it because it is a take, like a little hint of queerness, but in addition to ha- wanting to and liking it, it's also a little like shows a little bit of queerness. And I, yeah. and I like that. Yeah. I don't want to pass. Like, that's not my goal. That's not my intention. So that's great. Thank you. This is be, me being more self-confident and working on fixing all that shit that I told you about. It's going real well. Okay, the straightest thing about me is that I actually accidentally went to a bikini coffee stand <gasps> thing. That's fantastic. Okay, the weird <laughs> thing is, like, so I have this, like, little... It's like one of those, like, I want an Americano, and she's like, okay, here are my boobs. Yes, yeah, yes, okay, yes, yes, yes. She was wearing this, like... <laughs> Uh, like a bikini but then also this mesh thing that was like you know the the biggest mesh like thing it was like you know it's yeah. not Could, you I couldn't even cool. catch fish with it it's exactly. two meals <laughs> yeah, yes okay. uh-huh. that's cool i'm gonna describe <laughs> the next orgy i set up <laughs> so many holes you can't even catch fish with <laughs> um but like Okay, so this like little coffee stand has turned over so many times and so i was walking past it the other day and, and it saw like bikini and I just didn't even believe it. So like I randomly was there and like just happened to, I never go there, but I was like, ah, I want a coffee on my way to work. And I went there and then it was like bikini girl. And it's like, and then I, you know, was like, Oh, is this like creepy? And then I was, cause I'm the only one here and everyone's walking by seeing me order from this girl. And then I was woman. And then I was also like, Oh, this is how we demonize the female body because I feel creepy just for looking at a woman in in a bikini and that shouldn't be a big thing and that's why you know we have men that kill women and rape women because the female body is so anyway it did uh, get... yeah but she's there to sell coffee with sex not be progressive about the female body you don't know like, that i'm pretty sure but i mean sure she's also there to sell coffee but it's like strippers like they could be there because like fuck i have an awesome body and i want to show it off and i'm gonna make money off of it like the coffee costs eight dollars eight fifty um do you think on capitol hill or any of the neighborhoods of the big cities that like a banana hammock coffee stand (laughs) would would be successful i think no and i think the difference is like boobs look good no matter like they're they're just Th- themselves and they're good like no one likes a flaccid dick like that's no, no, not no, 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 attractive no. i just i just mean that he is shirtless and making coffee oh gotcha. that's all i mean oh okay yeah i would do that and i love flaccid dicks you really i think they're really fun to look at you like looking i, I think flaccid dicks are not interesting like i'm sorry you're wrong about that but okay uh, when I was in Berlin, I heard this really great joke, and it made me think of you. Oh, what is it? I can count the number of men I've slept on on one hand. 100, 200, <laughs> 300. <laughs> I love it. I've definitely slept with less than 100. I, uh, I don't know. I've de- probably, most definitely, you know, likely slept with less than 100 <laughs> people. <laughs> What's your what's your level of confidence in these numbers? You know, I'm feeling like 60% confident that I slept with less than 100 people, which means just based on math that I slept with 60 people. That's how math works. Great. Yep. So that's it. That's it. A uh, special thank you as always to Charlie Finn for the use of our theme music. And thank you to Russia for not killing Mike. I was worried about that. Thank you to Josh Galassi for being my replacement and then dying (laughs) (laughs) and we never saw him again for no reason yeah and thank you to all of you you're all the bomb diggity you're fantastic and i heart you Mm -hmm. thank you to the russian spy lady who put her brain in me yeah you're gonna be so much more interesting now (laughs) (laughs) so that's it it. uh i'm mike johnson i'm kyle getz until next week be butch be fabulous be you See you next week. See you next week. Shh. 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 Shh.
way and by the way do you hear what your words bring oh 